Hello everyone and welcome to the one of monthly tournament number two, the May one. And before we go into the game, with the first game being Rampage vs. Hippie, uh, I have a shout out to do, as always. First of all, for Matcherino, where you can contribute money to the prize pool without paying anything. So that those players don't just fight over who has the more more honor, more pride, more skill, but also over a bit of money. And you can do that by exclamation mark Matcherino in the chat or on YouTube, the link down in the description, and then click on this claim code and add 25 cents to the price pool for free. There's a couple of other free ways on the site here how you can add money. For example, just visiting the site, the website of G Fuel, not doing anything there, just visiting the site adds another 10 cents. That's all you have to do to add money to the price pool for free. And yeah, we already at $76, getting close to the 100. Happy to see that. I hope we will get there. And I hope you have a good day. And yeah, this is the first one. Wano. Monthly tournament. And then the second, the bigger thing, with even a bit more of a good cause. Like, this is nice as well, but this is really, really nice. Um, this weekend, the third SDL fundraiser tournament is going on. And we still have spots open for both the Steel Division and the Wano part. And you can join the tournament, and you can also obviously contribute to the fundraiser. Description also on YouTube down below, on Twitch, exclamation mark AAH in the chat. And you get to this page where you can sign up, where you can find all the information about the rules and so on in the tournament. But also, most importantly, this link up here gets you to the fundraiser, where we now already have 40 bucks in. And it's still only one donor, so that first donor who put in 20 bucks at the first place added 20 more. Great to see. Uh, yeah, SDL fundraiser tournament for Action Against Hunger, an absolutely amazing NGO that can need all the help they can get. But with that said, yeah, hope to see you there on the weekend. We will have some fun events as well, including show matches versus Eugen, or with Eugen, together with some other content creators including Ben Diner, and maybe a hangover Vulcan HD Gaming, we have to see, as he has the birthday, his birthday on Saturday. And with that said, let's jump into the game. Rampage versus Hippie. And this is game number one. On the left side, we have Rampage. On the right side, we have Hippie. And the divisions we play here, as map, the, uh, as the same rules for the maps as last monthly tournament. Each week has a map, and you play both games on the same map, so that it is fair for both sides getting counterpicked and this and so on, and that the games are easier to set up. This week it's two lakes, and the matchup we got here is second Panzer Grenadier versus 39th Guts Tolkovi after the bands. And that's interesting. And oh my goodness, that SU-24 did just wipe out a lot of stuff. Ooh, damn. Meanwhile, BRM1 comes in over here. F4... F104 nearly gets the Mi-24 here. That thing needs to land ASAP. But I don't think it will be fast enough in doing that. Both sides secured their extra spawns. But Schwedka heavies on the way for some sneaky action here. Will the F... 1-4 be able to get the kill, or will this land in time? It lands in time! Nice! Good job here by Hippie, at least it gets out of line of sight of the F-1-4. Now MiG-23 MLA comes in. Is that able to get the kill here? Well, it's Rampage is getting a CV in here down on himself. Kills off a helicopter with a Gephardt. It was an un unarmored Mi-8 recon. Hooks Razid. Up over here, Rajvetka has to run. Ulmachiki up here. A couple more Rajvetkas sitting around. Hippie feels like Hippie has only really few units. Is this really 1500 points? Like we had the SU, obviously. And that had an effective run, but did I miss some deaths? I mean, the BRM we saw, we saw the Mi 8, but it doesn't feel like. Feels like there should be more on the front line, no? Meanwhile, Milan will fight the BMP3 here. 
and get the kill there. Got a kill on one unit there at least. But overall, yeah, a couple of units killed. Like, it felt like Hippie so far had the better trades. But somehow doesn't really have much on the front line. I mean, obviously, we have to keep in mind the Red Red Gas. Oh, they are stuck. We have flying with helicopters over tree lines and on the edges of maps. Two things that can that they don't like. Okay, now they go. Yeah, that obviously is an investment. 110 points for the helicopter. Vajvetka Heavies is another 45. Also, why is he doing it with Vajvetka Heavies? Is he just wanting, I guess he just wants to have an eye on the enemy. Because Vajvetka Heavies are not an ambush unit. They don't have any AT weapons. A lot of Vajvetkas overall for Hippie here. But not a lot of fighting forces, really. This is interesting. Like a heck of a lot of Red Red Gas. He got a good kill here, but if he wouldn't have gotten those kills, situation here would be already pretty bleak. But even with getting the kills, he wasn't really able to leverage that just yet. I mean, good position on the recon here all around. And the Red Red Gas with heavies might give him more ice in the rear. But this is interesting. Meanwhile, SQ-24 cluster, trying to get the gap hard. Oh, that's an interesting run. Is that a good run, though? Gephardt doesn't get killed, SU goes down, yeah, no. Wasn't a good run. Wasn't a good run at all. Yeah, you should... <laughs> this is... There's a reason why this is called anti-air. Uh, yeah. Like, even if they would have traded, it wouldn't have been a good run. But with it not being a trade, it's horrible. <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. Like, Gephardt have better availability and cheaper price. This was played on the old patch still, so Gephardt was also an absolute beast when it came to killing power. So trying that on the old patch felt wild. Like, on the new patch, you might be able to achieve it, but you still most likely will use your cluster bomber, which now is way more expensive, so it would have been a bad trade there as well. Like, don't try this on the new patch either. It's really, really risky. Like, you basically hope on your luck that the Gephardt has shitty RNG rolls and doesn't hit you there. But that's obviously not what you want to do. Meanwhile, Conqueror is coming in here. On the other side, we have some more Leopard ones coming in. It's a Perry RPO. As Redgar's pushing forward, Ural coming in here to keep these guys supplied. But Refreshka versus Jäger felt of Clara is not a fair fight, especially as West German infantry on this patch was still a bit more powerful. Me at MT. This was played on Monday before the new patch hit. And Rampage is up on the point where he would win. Phantom Dog Fart. Hello. 200 points in the tournament worlds is enough to get you the W. So, Hippie will have to do something about it eventually. Good round of the SU-24 HE. And the F-14 ATs trying to come in as interceptors, but they don't have any intact air weapons. They try to go to the stratosphere to run away from the MiG-23. It works out, but one still gets hit with a rocket, so it will take a, quite a while to get repaired. Meanwhile... Rampage trying to hunt down some Red Red Gas here in the rear. Skimmy Thar coming in to try to deal with that. Always good to have a recon helicopter like this, especially a cheap one just trying to find infiltrators, especially on a map like this. The infiltration is not that hard to achieve, usually. Meanwhile, Red Red Gas up here, chilling out. Mi 8 MT coming in here with some rockets. There is fire though, Skimmy Thars using their 25mm. One is running out of ammo though, so only one leaving uh, left to fire. The other one now getting hit hard by the Mi 8 MT. Second Mi 24 coming in with rockets as well. Skimmy Thar over here gets annihilated. Ooh, Vulture Makers over here need to unload a ASAP. Okay, they will do so. F104 coming in. On this patch, they only cost, did cost 95 points, so they're re really effective. I'm surprised to not see a Priusa around yet, by the way, from the side of Hippie. To try to keep these guys at a minimum. Like, a Priusa would just put the, make them into mincemeat here. 
so not having AA here, pretty bad if you want to do that much helicopter play. And F-104 is doing a really good job here. One will most likely bite the dust. This should go down, come on. Come on, MiG-23. Yeah, okay, gets the kill. Doesn't go down itself, but trading one of these for two helicopters, super fat rate. Like 95 points for 135 and a 100 point helicopter. That's still a good plus that you made there. Loss availability on helicopters is worse than on these planes, so that's another plus there as well. I think that you might still get four. I think you get three back per card now, but you might still get four, not sure. Meanwhile, cube artillery is trying to do its job over here. Dealing some damage, but not being overly amazing. BMP3 though. This one is quite powerful, as there's no ATGMs on these normal infantry squads. You only get Milans has ATGMs here. So BMP3s can bully Jaegers from afar quite easily. Unlike, for example, Mech Rifles or Motor Strike Medis, where they have to be a bit more careful with their armor. Though a Leopard 1A5 is a different level of opponent. And that one has found the BMP3. BMP3 hasn't found the Leopard, so Leopard will get the first shot, will get the second shot, will get the kill. Still no AA here from Hippie, relying on fighters instead. Not sure how much I like that. Finally a Pusa in the north. But I would say a Pusa early on would have been a good idea. As now Hippie has lost all the helicopters. Still putting this one under siege. Leopard has to retreat here though. Well, it's the Akatsia it is keeping its fire up. Meanwhile, Gephardt rolling in the north. Pensacoradier is rolling in here as well. But Hippie has eyes on the field. This one is a good move. Really good position for a recon unit. To see any sort of reinforcements coming in. But Shotka Heavies in the south also made it in. Me 8 though. Big investment to just keep around there. Guess it got hit by something, so it just landed so it doesn't get spotted by any planes. As one of 10 point helicopter, you don't want to keep idle. You want to use that. Meanwhile, TADBV gets hit here. MiG 23s try their best once more. Fly pretty close to the gap arts, though. Oh no. Well, they both go down. One goes down. Second one takes a lot of damage. And they didn't really achieve much, did they? So, another bad sorty, uh, bad sorty there for the MiG-23s. And another reason to rather rely on Priusas in this matchup. MiG-23s are a bit slow, don't quite have the range. Strellas, once coming in, okay. They also, they don't really have the AA range. I, feel, I find them pretty helpful against helicopters. Or in like rear positions, if the enemy wants to deep dive you. But I rather rely on Priusas, Coops and Osas. Then on these trellas. And you have all these three options available in 39th. Interesting deck choices here by Hippie overall, I would say. Like, plays the stack for sure different than I do. I mean, so far it's not going horrible, but I would say Rampage is in a slightly better spot. At the reusage here, pretty okay. Pretty alright. Conqueror is in good spot. I mean, well, BTR is trying to hit over here, but Milan is their dreams. Conquerors going pretty deep in the north though. Two Skimithars locking this section down, but the uh, Conquerors obviously can deal with that. T64 deals with some infantry around here as well. Whilst the Strellas are rolling in, TADBV rolling forward as well. I guess that's what the Strellas are here for to protect. But they for sure won't get a shutdown before the Cluster Bomber gets through. Like only Coops have the ch a chance for that in my experience. Maybe if it's a really slow play in your Osas, Strellas just don't have the range. SU-24HE, though, gets a cleaning up on these planes over here. Tornado on the chase. And it doesn't fly over the Priusa. It doesn't fly over the Strellas. With Coops, you might have hit that. Ooh, but the SU still survives. Lucky there. Poor Hippie. Meanwhile, T-64BV. The last time we will see this for a while. As this tank now has been removed from this deck because it didn't make sense that it had T-80s and T-64s at the same time from a historical standpoint. Though now it got T-62s on the new patch, which are 
a way better edition than the T64 in my eyes, because T64 is pretty close in performance to the T80s. Meanwhile, T62 allows you to have a cheap tank that is pretty versatile. Oof. F-104's AT's coming in once more. Trying their best. Ryusa didn't quite get the kill on the first one, but gets the kill on this plane here. Cluster Bomber coming in. A lot of air play now from Rampage, but gets hit pretty hard by the counterplay of Hippie. Hippie bringing in more BMP3s, bringing in a Mi-8 MT as well. A lot of reinforcements here on the way, including the Strellas that are now moving forward. But they all the infantry is gone. So these BMP3s are needed badly at the front line. TADBV, ooh, this is going down, isn't it? Yes, Milan finds the connection. So Hippie under pressure in the northern town. Meanwhile, Conqueror is flying the other way against the Scimitar. Gets the kill on the Scimitar. Another Mi-8 MT coming around, but a Gephardt is in the rear. So you need to be careful. Has 2800 range against helicopters. So it can shoot you from a good distance. Whilst the Su-24 comes in once more, but two tornadoes this time. Or at least a tornado in the F-4F. Coming around, this tornado is going down though. Cluster Bomber did drop its bombs. It's still an okay trade if you get the tornado for it. F4F coming around here. On the HE version. Ooh, gets it. Why is this MiG-3 not 23 so not standing uh, staying around? Meanwhile, F4F over here. Gets the Rajvetkas killed. Damn. Oh, oh no, you're turning the wrong way. Sir, you're turning the wrong way. Miss Micro here by Rampage. The producers and strollers will like that. Or at least the producer. But that's good enough. As it was already damaged before by the MiG-23 missile. So a lot of air bleeding going on on both sides. But especially on the side of Rampage. But not before achieving something on the ground. And on the last patch, suiciding planes in 1v1 was a perfectly fine strategy. Because they were often capable of dealing enough damage to pay off with one run. Now with the higher prices, not the case anymore, but on the other hand, they also have higher chances of surviving a run now, with the Pius up being reduced in damage. Ooh, that Mad Strike Buffer uh, didn't really hit anything, did it? As all the inf front line infantry already has been cleaned out here, only the Conquerors remaining with one missile, but that won't help it against some Jaegers coming in. Hippie still trying to hold out, a CV on the way, a Sultan CV on the way. Leopard trying to engage units in here. Meanwhile, more and more. Ooh, interesting. The AGS coming in. The little cre uh, grenade launcher jeeps here. That's quite interesting. The UATSs with a grenade launcher on top. Meanwhile, smoke on the horizon. Bombs coming in once more. Plane goes down. Doesn't really hit much. Does it? So, once more suicide run here by Rampage. Could use them pretty effectively in the south, as there's still no way around there. But continues to try to use it in the north. Ooh, this Mertzweckwaffe run might be effective. Uh, I'm not sure. No, I don't think it was. It only killed two infantry squads, got killed, so... Not really effective in that regard. I could see uh, now firing into the north. CV on the way. Motosvalky BMP coming in as well, as is a T-80BV. Rala AA coming in here from the rear. Motosvalky holding the line. Well, it's some M48s roll in here. Together with a Leopard 2. Tank gets killed off over here. HE Bomber coming the other direction. Gets a kill, but Gephard is around. And that ends badly for the SU-22. Milan still around here, not discovered. BTRs engaging the Jäger of Clevers, but getting hit by the Milan. Milan still has a supply truck next to it, so it won't run out of missiles anytime soon. Well, supply truck is basically out of supply, but still allowed it to reload to full once more before running out. Now the Sultan contests the zone, but there's not that much in front of it. If Hippie just would A move through it, Hippie could kill all of this off, but 
is on the timer. Has a lot of tanks coming in. Three M48s and a Leopard 2A3, which would be the most powerful tank around here. One T80BB on the other side. Would end the ambitions of Hippie's push here relatively soon, but for now, Hippie could move and then do a lot of damage. Pioneers over here got stunned. Tillery hitting around. Very RPO. Ran out of RPOs. So they now will get hit by the TNT of the Saperi and will get finished off. But Sultan at least got killed, got killed off here before the tanks came in to defend it. Oh my god, Strella's really? Strella's not getting the kill, Prius are not around. T64 BV will engage some M48s and should be able to deal with them, but Leopard now has arrived and that's an engagement you don't want to take. Well, unless you are getting a crit, then you might be able to take it. But not with all the M48s coming up afterwards. You need to be really careful here. 64 it does get another hit. Yes, it does. Now it needs to smoke. Down to one hit point. It won't smoke. Ah, it smokes now. M48s all missed their first couple of rounds. It needs to go into rear mode action. The ADBV might come up to support it. F104. Not finding the kill onto any ground units. Tries to find the kill onto the SU. Doesn't quite get it though. F104 is still flying around. MiG 23 got one missile hit in. Fires another one, which doesn't connect though. No AA in the south still, so F104 might be able to escape down the lane here. Yes, it will be. MiG 23 needs to disengage as the gap parts still lurk on the ground down here. And you don't want to run into those. But good kill for the T-64. Getting the Leopard was important. Getting a sub full supply truck here, also really important. 20 minutes remaining. Can Hippie turn this around? You what's pushing forward. Tornado GPA with Seat coming around. But there is no Seat AA up here, actually. And if it flies too deep, it might actually end up dying to the Strellas. Ah, doesn't end up dying to the Strellas. 30 ECM. Strella... AA accuracy only 40%, so would need a couple of missiles here to get the kill. But only two connections really, because it's five hit point, uh, five damage versus ten hit points with no armor. So still have to be careful about flying directly over Strellas. Motor Strelki BMPs, gauging pioneers with flum hand flum patrone, hand flum patrone pretty capable. As you have six launches of it. Ooh, Strella trying to find the kill onto a. Recon helicopter will find it. And the north is pretty much cleaned out. Hippie did a good push now. Did it just in time before the tanks arrived. Caught the tanks out in the open. Got a bit lucky there with the RNG in the T64 versus Leopard 2 fight. Hit all the time. Also did a crit with the first shot. So pretty well done for this 55% accuracy T64. Meanwhile, Priusa is now coming in for the south. One more for the north. Try to help out with the A. AA situation around here as well. Uotsis have come in here as well. And they work as a bait right now for this Leopard 1 of A5 that will get hit by the Conquerors eventually. And the Conquerors can deal good damage against it, as it only has 7 frontal armor, but the Conqueror is still missing. And now Rampage is re reacting, is marking back, has a supply truck in the town to resupply all the infantry here. Skimithar has to be careful. Oh, also doesn't get hit. Conquer is kinda unlucky, I would say. Meanwhile, get part in the north. Versus SU-24. Should get the kill, yeah. AA uh, sparks were so insane on this patch. I, I'm happy that they got reduced since then. Like, one day later. <laughs> after this game was played. Bit unfortunate for these two combatants that they didn't play a day later. But, I mean, they knew what they were playing on. So, you would need to work around gap arts. But the issue with 39th is no Seats, so really strong Spucks like the Gephardt were kind of annoying. Well, us sitting around here. And Hippie needs a solution for the southern town to turn this game around. Can Hippie find a solution to get into this town? Or will Rampage get the W? Oh! Oh, this is good. Getting a supply truck stolen. Not sure if Hippie even realized that. 
but always nice to steal a supply drag. Then you can drive it away into the woods if you can't get it, uh, bring it home. Or use it as resupply in the frontline unit. Always nice to get have that happen to you. Meanwhile, Priusa's here. Should be able to fight kill onto the tornado. Not sure what the tornado was. Ah, the tornado was trying to CV snipe. Okay. But there's actually even... Okay, Hippie bought another CV in, in time already. Now has one leftover CV that could be used to contest this town, as Hippie needs to do that. If Hippie wants to at least get to a draw, if not the win. As currently. 300... 87 points versus 12 is a win for Rampage. Meanwhile, the ADBV rolling in, in the south, but Redka is moving forward as well. Ah, one supply truck is running away. Leopard 2A3 coming in with the second Unimog. Will this one also be stolen? Or is it too close to the Leopard? Might be too close to the Leopard. Ah, and the Rajvetka has now revealed himself, but now it's too f Okay, but it's also too far away from the Rajvetka to get... Okay. A bit unfortunate there for Hippie. Could have stolen a second Animog. That would have all been really nice. I mean, they're not the most expensive supply drugs, but stealing any supply drugs always, always fun and always annoying for the enemy. Good Priusa micro there. Not finding the kill on Tornado though. I think one Priusa died in the south beforehand. MiG 23 MLA flying back home. Ooh, the Mi 8 E down here could be resupplied. And then also maybe could be used for some real line action. But now that the Rajvetka Heavy is taught, yeah, uh, that, that... Yeah, this could have been the, the combo. Rajvetka Heavy plus Mi-8 to annoy some reinforcements with rockets. Sadly, Hippie realized that he had the supply drug a bit too late. At least got it out. Didn't got it recaptured, but... Not able to profit to it from it too, mu too much. Still a good sneak there. Now artillery trying to fight the Sultan, maybe trying to fight the Onimok as well, but a single Akatsia really doesn't do it. If you want to kill something with artillery this way, you need at least three or four uh, barrel artillery pieces. The ADBV here versus the Leopard 1, and the Leopard 1 gets it routed. Oh boy, this is unlucky, as it gets the kill as well. But this is the power of the Leopard 1, the ADBVs. Pretty cost inefficient against these. Eager over here gets hit. You need to kill three for one TADBV. Payoff. And achieving that is not that simple. You what? Rivets the grenade launchers. Trying from a rear. Hitting pretty well. Meanwhile, artillery still coming in here, but not achieving too much. Did some damage against the Unimog, but not did not get a snipe. So. Yes, you need more barrels if you want to do something like that. And Hippie needs the point. Needs to contest something. Left both CVs behind now. Well, I guess that's okay to not to ri not risk losing it. Well, me 8 e now coming in for some killing. Leopard trying to disengage here. Which was talking Maddie's. Not finding the connection. Another Leopard around. Artillery continues firing around here. Another Leopard 2A3 is in. Even if you get the Unimog, it's, doesn't, it's not really worthwhile because it's a 15 point supply drug that you got 10 per cards off. And the Akatsia <laughs> needs a full on supply drug maybe to get the supply back that it invested into killing off that Unimog. So, yeah. Overall, inf Artillery in 1v1 at the moment doesn't quite feel worthwhile. And especially not if you only use one barrel. If you use it as single pieces, they don't do much at all in my memory. Unimog over here. At least put a couple of supplies into that Mi-8 team. If Hippie... Yeah, even if it would get stolen back, Hippie at least stole a bit of supply out of it. So, good on him there. Meanwhile, Unimog's over here gets sold back. Let's see. Gephardt in the north, still sitting around, and this is now one of these slow two-way maps. 13 minutes to go, Hippie needs to be the one that starts attacking, but Rampage obviously well entrenched down here, has given up on the idea of an assault in the north. 
Hippy might have enough forces actually combined in the north to try to make a breakthrough for Delta. If you ever could capture Delta, this would be huge. But obviously also, once Rampage realizes that, Rampage can directly reinforce into Delta, so it's not that easy. It's really not that easy. Usually the best way of sniping these is with a surprise move, which will also not be really possible, because my Dreadgar Heavies and their Mi-8 are blocked by the Scapheart to fly around in the north. Tornado Seed coming in. Not finding anything. Smoke artillery coming in now. Or a big push with BMP3s. Is there CV in here? No. Doesn't look like it. Oh, HE bomber? Well, not really hitting. Reuse us. Firing back. MiG-23. MLA. Trying to find the kill, but oh my god, they are un... Hippie is pretty unlucky with the AA hits. We'll get this F-104, but the MiG-23, the ASFs of his, don't want to hit their missiles at all. Meanwhile, all of this got stunned somehow. I guess some BMP-3s around it died and then everything got stunned. And this push is not working out. Helicopter going down and Rampage is just really turtling in here. Having a lot of supply drugs, pushing forward with the Leopard. Getting a kill. Pulumachiki and RPOs trying to move forward. But this push just got completely shredded. They basically did nothing at all. Well, they killed a couple of Vulture Makers, but all of them are still alive, so they can be resupplied and brought back to full life. Matty's not hitting the Leopard 2s. SU-24 HE now coming in. Multiple of them. But the Gaparts will kill all of them. Ooh, got the CV snipe. But paid such a huge price for it. And there's, and there's already a new CV on the way. So another one as well to go safe. Tank goes down over here. Rampage now pushing. It's just good enough to make it a tie. I don't think so. Like, it's 120 points per minute, which is not that big. And the CV is already getting somewhat close, well, I guess, maybe, maybe it might be good enough to make it a tie for a while, which would put the pressure on Rampage to push it back, as it might get into the 200 point distance, it's close. That's 17 points to go, only 10 minutes to go here for Hippie, and Doing another push like this down here won't be easy. Uwats is now trying to rush over here. But the Leopard 2A3 is in their way. And that doesn't look too healthy either. Milan most likely will go down to this. I would expect it at least. Well, maybe not. Mi-24 uh, Mi AA not finding a single hit on that BO. The Uwats is not finding the kill. What's is not trying to... Ah, they, they guess they wanted to go for the CV snipe. And Hippie got into the tie range again. So now Rampage needs more points to get the W again. So at least that was achieved here. But obviously Hippie also threw a lot of units away. So Rampage could do a last minute similar push just on to Hippie to just get a couple of points and get the victory that, that way as it really is a slim margin. It's not even 30 points difference that Rampage needs, which is less than half a minute of ticks. Meanwhile, a lot of forces coming in in the north again. I guess Rampage setting up to maybe push there. But Redka Heavy's trying to the cheese now, trying to go deep. Did they already fire all their rockets now? Rockets turned off, but F-104 coming in once more as the helicopter killer. They were so effective at this, on this price point. Luckily now they're at 140 points, which reduces their effectiveness in that regard by a good margin. They are still decent at it, but they're not as super cost efficient at it anymore, which is a really good change. Of all the air changes and the AA changes in general, I like a lot. They're not perfect, but they're a big improvement to what we had before. I hope you agree there as well. Meanwhile, 
Unimox and Jaegers trying to go deep in the south. Realizing that there might be space for a push there. Sultan coming in. And yes, just a short contest of this would be good enough. Contest of in the north would obviously be even better. Me eights trying to find a kill. Gephardt on the way for hunting though. Tornado on the way as well. Me eight nearly down. It wouldn't box. Thanks for the follow. Also, Phantom Dog Fart. Did I? I think I thanked you already, right? But also, big thanks to you for the follow. Much appreciated. And same to Rampage. Tornado. Well, try to get the Mi 8T. Won't fully get it, but Rampage only needs a couple of points. Seven minutes remaining. Can Rampage find the points? Meanwhile, Hippie desperately trying to snipe some CVs, in some extent. Tornado Merkzweck Waffe flying around over here. Now a lot of units have been stationed around these Red Red Guys in the forest. To really make sure that they won't get out. Won't be able to run up to the Iltus leader and kill it off. What will Rampage do? Will Rampage be able to get in here? I would say it, Rampage should be able to get in here, but makes it harder than it's supposed to be. Like, could have already moved out with one CV. Stopped here for maybe a bit too long. Now m 48 though, rolling in. One leader, as he has three leaders in here, right? Yeah, one leader could already move up a bit. And then come in here with force unimox as recon units are around see it trying to fly around me eight he land to not get hit there strella's coming around hippie needs to hold this like hippie's chances for a real win are basically out of the window hippie just needs to prevent rampage from any sort of tick gets the sapari comradi to Secure this point up here. It still has two CVs in the south, so just the neutralization won't be easy. With a even with a suicide run of a plane or so. Question is Can these guys create a big enough gap that a CV can slip in here and just contest it for long enough? Five minutes remaining. This game is getting close. Damn. And Two Legs always has interesting dynamics. Like, it's not the most amazing map. And we only need one map like this, I would say. Especially with the current zone layout. But... It's a pretty interesting map. Meanwhile, M Me8 uh, over here, now coming to the south. Trying to help out dealing with this push. Conquer is also coming in. Mi-8s using all their rockets, conquerors joining in, trying to deal with these tanks. Gets one M48. Leopards will be hit as well. Conquerors over here have to disengage as they are out of missiles. Ah, too many subparries for the north. I would say focus all your f tanks that you can get out in the south. That's that's easily a TADBV. And that's what you right now need down here to stop it. Iltus leader of getting in, for example. F-104 is coming in. Is there Priusa? There is one Priusa. It's turned off currently though, as there's Seat around. It's turned on now, but Seat is around to still fire at it. Gets the kill. Strellas? Can they find a connection? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, they tried to kill off the Tornado. At least get the Seat, but that doesn't really matter. And the leader is on the way. Another Iltus leader gets bought. Really trying to rush the, the position down here. Metzweck Waffe coming in. Strellas really not finding their connections here. They don't have great line of sight. And they are... Are they fire and forget? No, they're not fire and forget. So you need to keep constant line of sight on the enemy's planes. Or helicopters with them. Get the kill. Ooh. Oh my... This would be so funny if this works out. But... I doubt it. <laughs> Meanwhile, not enough tanks and stuff around here. Strella's not positioned well here, really. They lose line of sight too easily. ADBV coming in. Get some kills on all the Jaegers and so on, but leader is on the way. Three minutes only, though. But the leader is nearly there, and as I said, doesn't need too long. 
doesn't need a minute. Doesn't even need half a minute here of ticks. Given with a plus two zone to get the point. So as long as Hippie can't somehow snipe the CVs all, Hippie is in a rough position. And now losing all the bombers before really hurts. Like now having an SU-22 bomber or so on this would be great. But Hippie doesn't have that. So the game is going down for Hippie here. <laughs> Wait, Safari come already in a helicopter trying to come in on the north, but there's just a, too much AA fire here. <laughs> Cap parts around everywhere. Oh boy, like, Hippie really tried everything here to cheese the way in, but only 13 points away now. And still two minutes. So, still enough time here, even with plus two for Rampage to get enough points on the board to get the clean victory. 64 is getting bullied. There's just too much stuff here. Yeah, Happy exhausted all the resources they had when they attacked into this point. And now it's basically GG. Happy struggling. Rampage doing pretty well here. And Happy surrenders. GG. VP to Rampage. Yeah, in the end it's pretty pretty clear victory. Let's say Rampage traded better throughout the game but also hippie in the end just suicided so much stuff in there so the kill death ratio is scuffed but still ggvp here to rampage keeping a cool head keeping a good defensive position and then counter-attacking just in time to get the victory over the finish line and well done well done here in game number one looking forward to game number two though as this looks like a somewhat close matchup I just didn't like the 39th of Hippie too much in its composure. The second Pentagon here of Rampage felt pretty fine. The first SU-24 bombing run though, that was devastating. But I'm still not quite sure where all the points went that Hippie had at deployment. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit... I was a bit surprised how little there was on the board for Hippie. So, let's see how it will end in game number two. We'll get myself a coffee real quick and then we will be back with game number two in six minutes. Here we go, game number two. And we switch, switch sides as Rampage is on the left over here. Hippie is on the right over here. And this time we have a second Panzer Grenadier versus second Panzer Grenadier mirror match. Jäger of Clevers, Milans. Where are the Falcher Megas? Falcher Mega of Clevers? No normal Falcher Megas on the side of Hippie so far in this deployment setup but still a lot more to deploy deployment to come i guess so yeah <laughs> yeah with you have th two wins under your belt now right rampage so yeah you most likely will go up against someone who also has two wins or at least two one win and a tie which could be a couple of players so yeah Shall be interesting. Leader going down here. A couple of gap parts already. Leopard 1 8 on the side of Hippie. Rampage over here bringing in the Sultan. I'm not a big fan of the Sultan if you can just take. And like you get one less per card. I mean, it's slower, so it takes longer to arrive there. And the armor, is it really is it really worthwhile? Especially as currently artillery is pretty lackluster, so even your mats survive quite a bit of artillery fire, and you can dodge them before it kills them. I feel like just taking mats that have one more availability per card, or Iltus in this case, um, feels better. Because <laughs> you miss out on a couple of seconds of tick with the Sultan, you get less of them, so if they get sniped, it hurts more. In short, the chances of them getting sniped is slightly lower, but not by much. Not by much. Like, you need to protect your CVs anyways, and they're not good enough to be frontline CVs either. Like, with infantry leaders and so on, I can use them as frontline CVs. With tank CVs especially, but here. It's interesting. Two CVs once more on the side of Rampage. So we'll get the tick advantage once more as 
Hippie ain't doing the same. Also, Hippie might be a bit over eager with the undeploy uh, the, the the deployment here. This is this is too deep. Yeah, you only can get up to these houses here. Same for the southern side. Like going all the way here can be risky. Yeager of Clever's coming late though. Okay. And this is not a good start here for Hippie, I would say, as these are going way too deep. Yes, one gets sniped in transport. Ooh. Two, second one gets caught out in the open by Falcher Megers. Doesn't get the kill. Ah, a bit unlucky there on the Falcher Megers of Rampage. So Rampage wants to get in, and this is a horrible, horrible start. Meanwhile, Falcher Mega off Clever tried to sneak around. Bio will spot them, though, most likely. Let's have a look on the. Yeah. Gets spotted out there in the open. So. Rampage. With the advantage here of the plus three, with a good start in the north. Not looking hot for our player in red whatsoever. Uh, in blue whatsoever. Hippie under a lot of pressure. F4F coming in now with a bombing run onto these Falcher Mega of Clarice. BO will go down. F4F kills the Falcher Mega of Clarice. Gephardt here now rolling in on its own. Oh no, this is a train wreck of a game, isn't it? Falcher Mega's. Engaging the Leopards here. Will go down at least. But they have already entered the town. Milan trying to get some kills. More Jaegers coming in. But if you only bring in three forward deployable infantries, you can't do as a, much of a deep push as Hippie tried to do here. You need to unload on these out, outskirt buildings here. Instead of trying to go all the way out. Also, I wonder why he was so late over here. Usually, he should be a bit faster here, from my experience, than the red side. He should be able to get in here. Not sure if it was deployed off the road or something. But ended in disaster there as well. So, Hippie under pressure in the north. Doesn't have the town yet, so also under pressure point-wise. The sneak actions didn't work out. Well, actually, Hachimiga of Clare got in here. But already wasted all their Panzerfaust 3s on empty transports, didn't it? Oh, getting this would be so big. Oh my god, why is it running there? No, it kills it. It kills it. Ah, getting that would be, have been huge. Being able to reload all the uh, six Panzerfaust shots. Instead, this now is empty. Oh, getting the supply truck captured would have been big. Really big. Yeah. But instead it gets the kill. You go off Clara over here, trying to re-engage. Tanks now get hit by Panzerfausts over here. Go down the Leopards. Yeah, this game is a train wreck. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This game is not going hot. Uh, Falcher Mega off Clara over here. Not having the stop power anymore. Unimog Supply coming around. I don't think Rampage has recognized this, but this won't be captured because close other units are too close by. BO 105 retreating. In 25, he is still going better for Rampage. More stuff coming in, including an Unimog. But this game is going so, so horribly wrong for our blue player in blue. Hippie really slipping in this one. That's really something that we have seen from Hippie in over the last couple of games we have casted like hippie might be the player i casted the most so far in the weekly in the monthly tournaments i think i casted three out of his four or five games in month number one and now i casted him here again and yeah he's pretty inconsistent between the games like sometimes hippies games look really really good and sometimes they just go horribly wrong like here like more so than for other players Somewhat inconsistent player and Rampage this time just capitalizing on it big. Sultan moving in to the front. Plus three still going on. And this is over, isn't it? This is week two, yeah. Jaegers engaging the Jaegers over here. Jaeger sitting in over here. I mean, if this Jaeger of Claire would have gotten the supply drug, this would have been huge. Would have been able to shut down so much stuff. Like, the, the Sultans would have gone down. The three infantry units would have gone down. 
would have maybe gotten hip hippie somewhat back into this game, but without that, with relying on Genas, Genas don't do much, guys. They are cheap, but they don't do much. Meanwhile, Tornado mit with Metzwak Waffe, they do stuff. Pa over here. Oh, that was still on the old Pa, right? Yeah, th these are not great either, because they wiggle too much. They misfire a lot. Gets the kill, though, on the Leopard. Tornado trying to get the kill there. Gephardt, though, is dangerous. Fulgermaker disengaging. And now Rampage is on a plus six. And a plus six, that's... <laughs> that's a lot of points. That's 240 points per minute. Gephardt over here. Trying to dodge the AT. Will not get hit, but doesn't have the ammo to fire back on it. It already used all its ammo against infantry and so on. Yeah, not getting the supply drug is painful. And this time the Sultan pays off, as this Falcher Mega player can't do anything against the Sultan. But I mean, even with a Ultus, it would take them quite a while to kill it. On the other side, we have Fuchs leaders, also an interesting choice. They cost 10 points more. They have an MG on top. They are, but they're at least fast, like, that's the thing. Like, I'd rather pay 10 point extra compared to the Sultan. Or at least a bit of fighting capabilities, though they don't really matter. But having the speed on your armored transport. Gephardt gets the park helicopter shut down, so nothing left here in the north. Yeah, this game unwinded really quickly here in front of our eyes. Hippie gets somewhat smashed here, I would say. Gephardt's moving up in the south, but... This is a desperation move now. Leopard 1A5 is coming in here as well. Jaegers trying to do something about this. I mean, there's not that much here, so I guess it's the best idea you can have as Hippie here. But the clock is ticking so hard against him. So this all has to be go going quickly, and going quickly means that you have to take risks, and taking risks often leaves to disaster. EO 105. Recon helicopter flying forward. Supply trucks arrive here first, okay. <laughs> yeah, Leopard's coming in. Jaeger's coming in. More is needed here though. Next minute of income tick has come. F-104 AT coming in again. You go Clara spot them. Gephardt. We'll try to engage. Should be able to get it, right? Yes, there we go. Tornado F3 coming out as well. Not really necessary, though. Looks running into the gap part. Not getting killed. Of Clara not finding the connection on the gap part. Hippie lucky this time. But needs more than just a bit of luck here. Turn this game around. Let's move this stuff forward. Get in there. Oh, but doesn't even have a CV here. Just like like contesting this would already help out. Like he actually needs to kill on the Ultus, and even then he would be down plus three. Un like, can't wait to unload here. Needs to be faster. Plus six still going on. Only three minutes remaining till the victory here for Rampage. And Hippie is too slow here. This is not going to work out whatsoever. Especially not with an F4. Okay, F4F. F4. Hits the looks. We'll go down for it. So not the most efficient trade there. Also not really necessary. Tornado tries to hit the cluster. Doesn't throw its cluster out though. What? What was that? Don't know. Yo, finds the Altus leader. Now the cluster would have been useful down here. Still no CV down here is a big problem. Still not a CV coming up, so yes, even if he gets the Iltus leader, it doesn't change much. It's still a plus three against against Hippie, so that would still end in pretty in a pretty quick manner. Still would leave Rampage on a plus uh, plus one hundred twenty per minute. With not much time left here for Ramp uh, for Hippie, and yeah, it doesn't even get to that as the ambush on this works perfectly. All leopards nearly down. Only the Jaegers make it into town, but they can be taken apart by the leopards with ease. One Gephardt survived, the other one went down as well. And yeah, this is GG. 
he'll be getting completely dismantled here in game number two. Rampage with a solid strategy, Hippie with, a, with the wrong setup, like the, the setup was just the wrong one. Didn't work out. Fuzzy Mega Flare wasting its Panzerfaust 3s in the rear. And a lot of bad engagements leading into more bad engagements, leading into a bigger advantage, leading into more bad engagements, leading into more pressure, leading into more bad engagements. Leaving Hippie here down for this week with a loss in both games. But as I said, Hippie is inconsistent, but that also means he has good games. And maybe he can level up the consistency and then he should be fine for future weeks. So still looking forward for more Hippie games, but this one was not a good one. <laughs> this one was not one of the good ones. Milan team here really doing its work. Gina coming in in the north. Even if they get the kill, it would just be that Genas don't get kills on Sultans either. Like, Genas do so little damage. And they don't do it. And, yeah, here we go. Rampage gets the victory with nearly a 3-1 to KD. Not the game that Hippie wanted at all. But GGVP to Rampage. Making it a clear 2-0 victory here. In a really interesting game number one. And a super clear cut game number two. Showing that... Even in the mirror match, it wasn't about the divisions. Even in the mirror match between two uh, uh, second Panzer Grenadiers, Rampage still has the upper hand. So, with that game finished, we will move on to the next one, which will be Derek versus Phoenix. Looking forward to that one. And yeah, hope you do as well. Derek, one of the top players. Uh, number two on the ladder at the moment, number two in the April tournament, and not performing super hot in week number one, having only a draw with Gouts, so has to make some spots up, will play against Phoenix, maybe Phoenix can put a wrench into his plans though, and make him at least get another draw, let's see, in game number two of this series, of this monthly tournament. <laughs> 